Yes, yes. Plombo, do something for me. Of course. Follow that man with the false nose. How do you know it's false? Well, it's not the sort of nose one would wear out of vanity, is it? So he's probably put it on because his own one is so much better. Do you know who he is? No, do you? Come to that, who are you? I, I don't think you can help me. Yeah. But uh, you do need help, don't you? Mm -hmm. You came in here because it was the only place of refuge that you could find. <laughs> You're an art student, don't you? Mm -hmm. That folder and that rather pretty hat. My name is Christabel Carstairs. Christabel Carstairs. Well, that's a good, sensible, down-to-earth sort of name. I'm sure you don't believe in hobgoblins, especially when they wear false noses, which are always inclined to get a bit droopy in this kind of weather. Are you going to tell me who it is? I don't know. He's been trying to blackmail me. Because you've done something wrong? Yes. Well, perhaps you'd better tell me all about it. I don't suppose it's as bad as you think. What makes it so terrible is that I've broken faith. Not just with my brother, but with my father, too. Perhaps you've heard of him. Colonel Carstairs. Colonel Carstairs? Oh, yes, of course. He, he built up that remarkable collection of uh, Roman coins. Oh, yes, everybody. Oh, I seem to remember reading an obituary notice uh, some two months ago in the Morning Post. Yes, that was him. A wonderful man, but a very stern and unbending one as well. He'd never have understood why I did this frightful thing. He'd have thought I was insane. He dedicated his whole life to that collection. He had a full set of coins of every emperor of Rome. And the heads on those coins really meant more to him, I think, than the faces of his own three children. Well. Is that Helio Gabinus? Yes. Dressed up in the robes of a vestal virgin. A very undesirable person, Mr. Trussard. Yes. I never realized you had a gold Cistercius of Hadrian. The only one I've seen was at that sale in Amsterdam last year. That's where I bought it, Mr. Trusslove. I was the underbidder. As so often. You know, Colonel, I never realized. I prefer not to use my own name at auctions inclined to put the price up. Well, if you ever decide to have a sale, I hope you'll let me know well in advance. There are items here that I'd give my right arm to. There will be no sale, Mr. Truslub. The Carstairs collection will remain intact. There's a lovely thing. Uh, yes, isn't it strange that the finest piece in the whole collection should be not gold or silver, but mere bronze? As yes, brightly minted as a new penny. Yes, but not the head of King George V. Augustus Caesar. It's extraordinary. The, the freshness and delicacy make it almost priceless, Mr. Truslub. I was going to say alive. Yes, yes, I see. But now, who has the collection now, Miss Carstairs? My brother Arthur. He was always the one who was most interested in it. My other brother, Giles, was in Australia when father died. He didn't even come back for the funeral. Yeah. Well, they never really got on together. Giles is rather a reckless sort of person. Yes. And father only left him a small allowance, hardly enough to live on. Mm. Uh, and what did he leave to you? Everything, except the collection. Except the collection. All his money and a house in Brompton Gate. I thought it was rather unfair, really. And anyway, I didn't want to live there, so I no, let no, Arthur course. have it whenever he's in London. He's away a good deal, travelling to auction sales and things. Uh, I hardly use the house at all. Where do you live? I've taken a little flat in Chelsea. It's more cheerful than the house, and just around the corner from my art school. You see, I didn't just want to be a rich girl. I wanted to have something worthwhile to do. So about a month ago, I enrolled in Miss Oliphant's Academy. Miss Oliphant's Academy? 
The great thing is, dear, have you got soul? Well, Miss well Holly, talent we can teach you, dear, but soul comes from the great within. You must let it all come out. Yes. No inhibitions here. Oh, have you met Max, our oldest member, but oh, so young in heart? How do you do? Come and sit by me. Yes, I'm seeing You got your paints, eh? Oh, my, what an expensive box. Have you been to life class before? Uh, no. No, I haven't. Hello. I'm Madge. This is Hector. Don't take any notice of Max. He's an old goat. Be well, careful what you say. This young lady's been properly brought up. Mr. Hawker? Mr. Hawker, may we have you if you're ready, please? In here, that's the idea. Get rid of your robe. I'll take that now. Up on the podium, dear boy. Up on the podium. Now, uh, right there. That's it. Uh, you remember what? Uh, that's the idea. Splendid. Now, here's your whiskers. Now, there we are now. Settle down nicely. That's Better than a bowl of apples, eh? His name was Philip Hawker. And from the first moment I saw him, I knew I'd seen his face before. But it wasn't until a few days later I realised where. And by then, I was hopelessly in love. He was so unlike the other young men I'd met. They were all stockbrokers or army officers and they decided when they were 12 years old what their lives were going to be like and they'd stay in the same old rut until the day they died. Philip never seemed to care about tomorrow. He'd had all sorts of jobs, working in a garage and a market garden and driving a taxi. I just thought he was the most wonderful person I've ever met. Philip, you are clever. No, there's nothing to it, really. All you need is brute strength and ignorance. I don't think you're ignorant at all. It's just that you've you never... never... got properly educated. <laughs> well, they don't teach you much in an orphanage. Too busy keeping you in order. Mm. Must have been horrible. No, it could have been worse. Not the same as having a family, of course. It's not necessarily an advantage, you know. I'm rather worried about mine. What, Arthur? Hmm. I went round to see him yesterday. He's really letting that house go to rack and ruin. He sacked all the servants apart from one old maid who's practically senile. And you've never seen so much dust and dirt. Well, I should tell him off then. It's your house, isn't it? Yes, but... I suppose I'm rather frightened of him. Well, he's become so odd. I don't know how to explain it, but ever since Father died, Arthur's become, well, more like him. They used not to be at all alike. Arthur is the brain in one of the family. He's got degrees in mathematics and economics. Mm. But now his mind seems to have narrowed down almost to an obsession. What's he obsessed with? The Carstairs collection. I'm sure he takes it out of the safe every night and gloats over it. <laughs> and the way he talks, you'd think that a collection of Roman coins ought to be guarded somehow by all the old Roman virtues. If they were virtues, <laughs> I'm not so sure. Well, I don't know much about all that. Hey, wasn't there some chappy who fiddled while Rome burned? Yes. Well, I don't call that very nice, do you? Mm. I think the ancient Romans were a beastly lot. They were very proud and very cruel, and they had the way of doing the most frightful things to their relations. I mean, Nero just didn't fiddle, you know. He sent his mother out to sea in a boat with a hole in the bottom. Crikey, you do know a lot. Did it sink? Yes, when somebody put the plug out. Well, if Arthur does anything like that to you, I'll punch him on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Bother. <clears throat> yes, Mrs. Girl? Miss Carstairs, there's a young man asking for you. He says he's your brother. Does he? Well, then he probably is. Ask him to come up, will you? Talk of the devil, that's Arthur. Well, I wonder what he wants. I mean, he's never been up here before. I'm sure he thinks Chelsea's a den of bohemian vice. Do you want me to go? No, um, you pass him on the stairs. Well, I'll hide in the spare bedroom. Well, don't be silly. I'm over 21. Christabel. <laughs> Giles! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that old dragon didn't believe I was your brother. I can hardly believe it myself. It's been so long. When did you get back? This morning. I went to the house first. The maid gave me your address. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Philip Hawker. This is my brother, Giles. How do you do? How do you do? I've got so much to tell you. Well, uh, I think I'd better leave you to it. You don't have to go. No, really, I must. I'll see you at the school tomorrow. Well, yes. Well, why don't we meet for lunch and then we can go and see about our costumes? Right. School? Costumes? What's going on? Oh, uh, Miss Oliphant's Academy. I've taken up painting oh. and we're all going to the Fine Arts Ball next week. Are you... <laughs> Are you going with him? Mm. You, you too, if you don't mind dressing up. Well, all the students, it'll be such fun. Okay. <laughs> now, tell me about Australia. Oh, I, uh, I don't really want to talk about it, Christabel. It wasn't a success. No. It doesn't look as if it agreed with you. I thought you'd be like they say in the advertisements. Handsome men are slightly bronzed. Huh. You look quite pale. <clears throat> Would you like some coffee? I just made some for Philip. Oh, yes, thanks. This is very good. What? Oh, do you like it? Miss uh, Oliphant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she must be a jolly good teacher. Of course, it helps if you're interested in the subject. What is he, a, a film star? No. Well, I only ask, because somehow I'm sure I've seen that face before. Really? Hmm. How odd, because I felt that too. Did you see Arthur? <laughs> I got the impression he didn't want to see me. Well, you should have written, you know, when Father died. Well, I've got it. He's the spitting image. What do you mean? Your pal Philip. He looks exactly like that Roman emperor. Oh, what was his name? Uh... Augustus Caesar. Yes, that's right. On that bronze coin that Father had. <laughs> How perfectly extraordinary. Yes, Fisher. Miss Crestable to see you, Mr. Arthur. Tell her to wait. Oh, very well. Miss Arthur, I'll see you in a moment, Miss Crestable. Thank you, Fisher. What the devil are you doing? Putting the clock right, Arthur. What have you done with the key? I said I'd see you in a few minutes. But that clock has stopped. Really, Arthur, you're living like a hermit. Well, there are worse ways of living, I suppose. Well, you can't expect poor old Fisher to cope all by herself. There ought to be someone to help her. You know very well, Christabel, that I'm a pauper. Well, I'm perfectly prepared to pay. It's just that I don't want to see the house getting into such a state, that's all. Oh, I see you're protecting your property, is that it? Giles is back. Did you know? Yes, he came to see me this morning. I didn't wish to see him. Why not? He caused a great deal of pain to our father in his lifetime. He didn't even take the trouble to attend the funeral. He couldn't. He was in Australia. Anyway, that's past history. Arthur, I do wish you'd be nice to him. Does he intend to work for his living? Of course. He's applying for a job tomorrow, in a bank. Oh, in a bank, I see. Where does he intend to live? At the moment, in my flat. <laughs> I've given him the spare bedroom until he can find somewhere of his own. How very generous of you, Christabel. I've always been very fond of Giles. Yes, yes, you have the usual female tendency to prefer the weak. I take it that he's penniless. Yes, I'm afraid Australia didn't turn out too well. But I'm quite sure that you'll take care of him, Christabel. I'll have to if you won't. Well, you are the rich one of the family. Arthur, this is ridiculous. 
This house and all the stocks and chairs father left me aren't worth nearly as much as this collection. You're not suggesting that I sell this in order to support your brother? Your brother too? And anyway, there must be duplicates, or, or ones you don't want. I mean, there are simply hundreds. You stupid, ignorant girl, Christabel. This collection is uniquely perfect. Our great-grandfather began it, and our father devoted his whole life to it, as I shall mine. It contains a single immaculate example of every coin struck by the Imperial Roman Mint. Gold, silver, bronze. There isn't a museum that has such a treasure. It's a sacred trust that's been handed down to us. Or rather to me, as I seem to be the only cast heirs with a proper sense of responsibility. Well, I'm just a woman, and I think that clocks should tell the time. You've got to live in the real world, Arthur. You can't shut yourself away like this. And what good are these coins, hidden away in a safe? They're dead, absolutely dead. Where are you going? If you're so keen to wind up your clock, I shall find your key. It doesn't matter, Arthur. It's not what I... Chelsea 356. Hello, is Mr. Hawker there, please? Philip? Can you meet me straight away? In the gardens, by the memorial. I want to give you something. Please, look, it's terribly important. In about 20 minutes. <laughs> I thought you were going out. It's just as well I didn't. Arthur telephoned. Arthur? For me? No, for me. He seemed quite friendly. Wanted to know what jobs I was applying for and whether he could help. Extraordinary. We'll, we'll talk about it later, Giles. I have to go out now. Yes, you do seem in a hurry. Even when I went out into the sunlight, I felt everyone was watching me. I was a criminal, a thief. But when I saw Philip, I knew that I didn't care. Philip, darling. Oh, dearest Philip. What's the matter? Oh, Philip, I do love you. Look, I shouldn't be here at all. I'm supposed to meet this man. But you sound in such a state. What is it? Well, I want to give you something. It's... Well, it's, it's sort of pledge between us. It's very nice, Christopher. What is it? Don't you see? It's like you, a portrait. Yes. Yes, I suppose it is a bit. Thank you very much. <gasps> now let's do something wild and crazy. Look, I'm supposed to meet this man. I'm late already. Oh, let's take a boat out on the surface. I really can't. I must go now.
Excuse me, miss. Have you got the time? It's a most curious story, Miss Carstairs, and I would like to help you if I can. That man. You saw him. Yes. He does exist. You see, for the last few days, I've had the feeling he was everywhere I went. I'd see him out of the corner of my eye, and then when I turn around to look at him, he'd vanished. Father, you do think he's real? Oh, he most certainly isn't a demon, if that's what you imagine. Demons don't go around wearing false noses. Oh, no, they, they're much better ways of disguising themselves. Oh, no, that man, whoever he is, heard about your indiscretion and decided to carry out a little blackmail. But how on earth could he see? See what? He was 50 yards away, on the memorial, wearing dark glasses. How could he possibly see what I gave Philip? Well, I've no idea, Miss Carstairs. It's the most interesting problem. One, no doubt, which we shall solve in time. The main thing now is to stop him bothering you. Now, if we could catch him red-handed... But, Father, don't you see? If I go to the police, it'll all come out. I couldn't bear that. I've acted like a common thief, and what's worse is I've stolen from my family. I must have been utterly insane. Well, you're in love, aren't you? And people in love, uh, they behave very oddly sometimes. Well... The head on the coin looks so exactly like Philip. I felt I had to give it to him, like a sort of wild wedding ring. Yes. All the same, I think you'd better ask him for it back. You see, you can only be blackmailed if you've done something wrong, and if you put it back where it belongs. Give it back to Arthur? Can't you imagine what he'd do? He'd feel it his duty to tell everyone his sister was a thief. Well, you can't expect to get off Scott free, Miss Carstairs. I mean, after all, you did deliberately take it. Yes. We can find some way of getting it back to Arthur without his knowledge. Uh, the main thing is to get it back from this young man of yours. You haven't told him, have you? That I stole a priceless coin to give to him, of course not. So you haven't said anything about the blackmail? Good. Ah, here's Flumber. Any news, Flumber? Oh, well, you were right about that nose. But I cannot give you a description of the rest of his face. There was so little of it showing. I followed him for about a mile, but then, unfortunately, he saw me and got into a cab. Oh. But uh, that's all right. I heard him give an address in Chelsea, 18 Cheney Place. Cheney Place? That's, that's my address. Well, look, perhaps she's gone there to wait for you. Her brother Giles lives there as well. Well, thank you very much, sir. That's wonderful. I'll see you first thing on Monday morning. Uh, yes, yes, I know where it is. The city branch, just off Morgate. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Da -da -da -da. Ah, is yes? Miss Carstairs in? No, she's gone to art school. Oh. Can I help you? Oh, have I the honour to address Mr. Giles Carstairs? That's right. Oh, your sister has told me much about you. My name is Flombo. I'm a private investigator. May I come in? Well, what's all this about? Oh, well, I would prefer not to discuss it where others may hear. You understand? All right. Your sister is being annoyed by some person, and that is why she has asked me for my help. She never said anything about it. Oh, no, well, it is not very pleasant for a young girl to be subjected to these uh, attentions, you understand. So perhaps it is fortunate that I have this opportunity of speaking to you alone. Our big cities are full of dangerous characters. But then, of course, I was forgetting. You have been away, yes? In Australia? Now, look here, Mr. Flambo. You knew very well that Christabel wasn't here. The landlady must have told you. Mm. She never misses anything. So, if it's me you really want to talk to... Yes, perhaps it is, Mr. Carstairs. And you are right about the concierge. We had a most interesting chat downstairs. She told me, for instance, that Miss Carstairs left the flat this morning and has not returned. She also told me that you received a visitor, a strange person dressed in black. <laughs> she must be mad. Nobody's been here. 
Well, as you say, she misses nothing. She says that she was going out to do some shopping and the man pushed past her on the stairs and came up here. Well, I certainly didn't let him in. Or perhaps he had a key. Nobody's got keys except Christabel and me. Uh, and the landlady, I suppose. What are you getting at? Oh, well, perhaps she is mistaken. After all, there are other apartments in the house. Look, who is this man that's bothering my sister? What does he want? Well, as you know, she is a very rich young girl. And maybe his interest is to separate her from her money. And what strange attire for a young man of fashion, huh? My sister and I are going to a fancy dress ball. Is there anything else you'd like to know? And a false beard as well. <laughs> what character are you going to assume, Mr. Carstairs? You wouldn't have heard of him. Ned Kelly. Oh, famous Australian bandit, of course. But I always understood that he disguised himself with an iron mask. And I don't see that anywhere. Is Mr. Hawker going to this ball as well? I believe so. Hmm. Why? Well, I just happen to think that he will protect your sister. Well, he has, after all, uh, an interest in seeing that she does not lose her fortune. No one appreciates money as much as those who have never had any. I think he will make her an excellent husband. Don't you, Mr. Castor? Don't stand there looking like that. Hector can't decide whether to be Piero or Bacchus. <laughs> the point about Bacchus is that he can bring a lot of bottles, so we shan't have to spend all our money at the bars. You got the tickets, Christabel? Hmm? You'll have to get them from the Albus Hall. We can all meet up at my place and go on from there. Uh, how many are we? Miss Oliphant wants us all to foregather here. She's laying on beer and sandwiches. We don't want to hurt her feelings. <laughs> what on earth is she going to be? <laughs> I say. Oh, uh, it's, um, it's Cleopatra. I haven't quite finished the headdress yet. It's going to have a snake in front. Now, what do you think? I think you look absolutely amazing. Oh, you're too kind, really. Mr. Hawker? Yes? I'd like a few words with you in private, if you don't mind. Oh, no, no, not at all. I'll, um, I'll just slip away and try this on. What's the matter? Has something happened to Christabel? Not yet. What do you mean? Well, I'll give it to you straight, shall I? I want you to stop seeing Christabel. Oh, I didn't mind at first, this silly infatuation of hers for a, an artist's model. But I'm not going to allow you to pester her for money. What the devil are you talking about? She has been giving you money, hasn't she? You can't deny it. No! Look, I was in the flat when she telephoned you the other day. She said she was going to meet you at the Albert Memorial That's and none of your give business. You what the hell do you think I am? There is a word for young men who live off rich women. Oh my God, do you think that I'm... You deliberately set out I to get her to not... fall for you, oh, so... You... Giles? What on earth are you doing here? Just remember what I said, that's all. Raining. Have you seen my umbrella? Would you describe me as a pimp? What? Well, your brother evidently thinks I am. What have you been telling him? Why, nothing. All those concerts you've been taking me to in theatres? I suppose you had a good laugh about that, your attempts to educate me at your expense. But what do you mean? I, I wanted to. Oh, I know I haven't had your advantages. Oh, for heaven's sake. No, it always was a ridiculous situation when you come to think about it. I can't afford to do the things you want to do. But it doesn't matter, Philip. Look, I like to take you to the theatre and to expensive restaurants. I want to do it. Then it's about time you realise that you can't have everything you want. However rich you are. Excuse me, Miss Strasser. There's a gentleman to see you. A clergyman. What does he want? He didn't say. Shall I show him in? Yes. Yes, very well. Oh, all right. Do you mind, uh, I see you. Uh, oh, Mr. Carstairs? Oh, I do hope you'll pardon this intrusion. My name's Brown. 
Uh, the fact is, I'm writing a little monograph about some Byzantine manuscripts. And I understand you have a remarkable likeness of the Emperor Constantine. Now, it would make an excellent frontispiece. I have a great many on a variety of coins. Oh, what a bit of luck. Now, do you think I could... No, no, sir, you may not. I do not allow my collection to be photographed. It encourages counterfeiters and other frauds. No. Now, sir, if you'll please excuse me, I am expecting someone. What a delightful house. These Victorians certainly knew how to build, didn't they? That cornice must be... Now, look, sir, I don't know your purpose in coming here, but I really must ask you to leave, sir. Uh, hello, Carstairs, sir. Good afternoon. The reverend gentleman is just leaving. If you really want a portrait of the Emperor Constantine, I suggest that you ask Mr. Truslove here. He is a dealer. Well, that's most kind of you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Truslove, I wonder if I may have your card. Thank you. Good day to you, sir. Thank you. Good day. Thank you. but he would recognize it immediately, of course. Yeah, what, at 50 yards? I hardly think so. Well, perhaps Arthur saw that the coin was missing and got Truslove to follow the girl. Well, that's possible. However, there is another suspect who is much more promising. What, Christabel's young man, Philip, you mean? Yes, well, I wonder if she's asked him to give the coin back yet. It'll be interesting to see what happens, because if he's the blackmailer... Yes, but of course, that means he would have to be a quick-change artist, doesn't it? How do you assume a complete disguise in 30 seconds in broad daylight? Well, he could have an accomplice. And if it is him, he, he won't want to part with the evidence. So, Flambeau, I know that. Look, you found out something. I have found out that Mr. Giles Carstairs was never in Australia. Oh, where was he then? In Wormwood Scrubs. Wormwood For fraud. And that is why he could not attend his father's funeral. I'm sorry, Philip. Look, I don't think there's much point in talking about it. Do you? Yes, I do. I realise now how selfish I've been and, and how horrid it's been for you. I promise I'll never put you in that position again. I mean, feeling you owe me something. I do, though, don't I? Please, Philip. It's been awful not seeing you. Well, I suppose it'll be all right if we only did the things I could afford to do. That doesn't give us much choice, I'm afraid. We could feed the ducks on the round pond, go to the theatre once in a while, as long as it was in the gallery. Oh, yes, do let's. That would be heavenly. <laughs> For me, too. <laughs> Philip? Yes? You know that coin I gave you with the head of Caesar? Yes. What about it? Well, would it be too awful if I asked you to give it back? My God! You even regret that now? You're really not taking any chances, are you? Well, don't be angry. There's a reason. Oh, I'm sure there is. That brother of yours has told you to stop wasting your money on a useless sponge, didn't he? So now you're quite willing to keep me on the hook as long as it doesn't involve spending any cash. Well, it's nothing like that, really. I wouldn't give it back to you, even if I could. What do you mean? You don't realise what it's like to be hard up, do you? I didn't want the wretched thing after we had our row, so I took it down to Bond Street. There's a man there who deals in Roman coins, a Mr. Truslove. Oh, no. Do you know him? Uh, my father did. Well, he gave me 50 pounds for it. So now I can take a girl out for myself. 50 pounds? It's too late to regret it now, Christabel. I only hope you had your money's worth. But where is Mr. Arthur? Went out about an hour and a half ago. I believe he was going to see a gentleman in Bond Street. Would you like a cup of tea, Miss Christabel? Yes, uh, thank you. <sighs> Shall I draw the curtains? No, no, leave them. Oh, very well.
dear, I don't know, I'm sure. I heard the young gentleman that come down and go to work, but I didn't mean the other young gentleman. Well, presumably gentleman. you have a key. Well, yes, I have, but I don't... Well, open the no door, woman. Please open the door. Oh. Put the key in. Yeah. Oh, Miss Carstairs. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Miss Carstairs? Oh, shall I fetch the doctor? No, no, fetch some brandy. Oh. Miss Carstairs, now what have you taken? Hmm? Oh, oh. oh aspirin looks. Now, how long ago? Oh, that's oh. a pretty stupid, wicked thing to do. Now, come oh. on. Now, pull yourself together. Now, where's the bathroom? Oh, I'm sorry. Is I'm... the bathroom? Yes. That's very wicked. Oh. Oh. Well, now you have oh. to make yourself sick. Do you understand? Oh. You've got to make yourself sick. Hello? Christabel? What on earth is going on? Oh. oh, you must be Philip. Oh, Miss Carstairs has done a very, very foolish thing. Uh, but she'll be all right in a minute or two. I do hope it wasn't your fault. Oh, Lord. Uh, I suppose you had a row. People seldom give each other tulips unless they've got something to be ashamed of. Are you sure she's going to be all yes, right? Yes, she'll be all right in a minute or two, but uh, she'll be a bit groggy for a while. She must have done it after her brother left this morning. No, 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 I wouldn't go in there if I were you. It's not exactly the, the right place for reconciliation. Uh, now, look, young man, uh, I'm going out for half an hour, uh, but I'll be back. Miss Carstairs will explain everything, do you understand? You're not to worry. It'll be all right. She, she'll tell you everything. Don't worry. I'll, I'll be back later. How grateful we are, Father. Oh, save your gratitude for Providence, young man, which sent me here. And you too come to that? Ah, that's better. Oh, I see Mrs. Gow has brought up the brandy. Will you have a glass? Yes, please. That's, that's better. Christabel has told me everything. Well, you probably know more than I do. Now, Miss Christabel, what exactly was it that frightened you? That man. He was at the house. I went to see Arthur. Oh. Oh, now, what did you want to do that for? Well, you see, we can't get the coin back because Philip sold it. Oh. So I thought the only thing to do was to make a clean breast to Arthur. Only when I went into the dining room, the man was there. He was prowling all around the house, looking in the windows. I see. Well, how do you get into the dining room? Uh, through the drawing room. But he couldn't have come in that way. He must have come in through the French windows. Well, presumably there must be a door into the kitchen as well. Uh, yes, well, the kitchen's at the end of a long passage. Yes, 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 I see. Go on. What did he say? He said, if I didn't give him a, a lot of money and my jewels, he'd tell Arthur I was a thief. <sighs> well, he wouldn't let me go until I promised. I said I'd meet him there again tomorrow night. What time? Ten o'clock. I'm going with her. Yes, well, that might be an excellent idea. Well, I must be off. Thank you, Miss Christabel. Uh, but I don't think you should be obtrusive. Uh, what disguise do you intend to wear? The fancy dress ball. I'd forgotten all about that. I hadn't. <laughs> was it wise to let him know so much? Well, she'd have been bound to tell him anyway. And if we give him enough rope, we'll see if he hangs himself. Mm. What news of Brother Giles? Oh, he's working in a bank. Perfectly respectable, as far as one can see. But curious when you realize that he has been in prison for fraud. No, I can explain that. Miss Carstairs told me that Brother Arthur gave him a reference. <laughs> Only goes to show that people aren't always as unpleasant as one thinks. But well, is there a possibility that he will forgive her as well? Oh, good heavens, no. <laughs> stealing from one's employer is one thing, but stealing from the Carstairs collection, <laughs> that'd be sacrilege. He'd probably hand her over to the police. It is a bit worrying, though, that Philip should be in such a hurry to sell that coin. It puts the obvious solution entirely out of reach. What obvious solution? Well, if he hadn't done that, we could have popped it back in Arthur's safe. At least I couldn't, but you could have done. You know. Yes, well, 
Perhaps I had better see this uh, Mr. Truslove. Uh, after all, he has a great reputation. He won't want to hang on to stolen property. Yes, it's a good idea, Flambeau. Mm. Appeal to his sense of honor or his fear of ending up in court. Oh. I have something else to do. No, oh, what's that? I'm going to give a fancy dress party. Hello, ex Hello Exchange. I want Chelsea 356. Miss Oliphant's Academy? Yes. Message from Miss Carstairs? Oh, what a delightful thought. How perfectly sweet of Christabel. One moment, I'll take down the address. Eighteen, Brampton Gate. Yes, thank you so much. Goodbye. He probably won't come at all. Oh, I'm quite sure he will. But when he finds the house full of people... Oh, I don't know. And Miss Christabel, a fancy dress party is the one place where a man with a false nose should feel at home. Yeah. That'll be our guest. Philip, now go and tell them where to hang their coats. Now, Miss Christabel, when the blackmailer calls for his money, I want you to offer him something else. Now, Monsieur Flambeau will tell you in a moment. Just... Hello, Christopher. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very 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 Oh, could I have a little sip of water? I'd like some. Oh, yes, yeah, oh, it makes a little strong. Thank you so much. It's kind of Oh, yes, good yes. evening, Giles. Oh, uh, hello, Christabel. Oh. Uh, look, excuse me a minute, will you? Giles? <laughs> Won't be long now. It's almost ten o'clock. I can't find Philip. <laughs> I went into the hall. What the devil's going on? The men said you'd gone in. I take it these are your friends. Yes. Well, I'm quite sure you'll excuse me if I and don't join you. What a lovely you. party. I can't think why we have to go for the other door. Do you? No, it's so fun here, isn't it? All the down. Oh, is yes. it? <laughs> I can't find Philip. He'll be out there in the hall. Lovely. I must say, your get ups is marvelous. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> I don't think yours is, is too bad. I really oh, must thank say. you. It's a clear you, know, you and I ought to go to the dance together. Sacred and profane. Yes, I suppose. We might win a prize. <laughs> Christopher, what a simply enormous house. Wouldn't it be fun if we all played sardines? Yes, or murder. Oh, I say, you are a scream. Shall we take the floor? Yeah, really I've always adored fancy dress dances ever since I was a girl. Oh, please, 
please, will somebody take me home? <laughs> Yes, of course. I suppose he was blackmailing you as well. One always becomes suspicious when people start acting out of character. You thought it strange, Giles, that my friend Flombo was pretending to be a butler, so you followed him into this room. But the time you should have got suspicious was when you were handed that unexpected reference. From Arthur? Oh, yes. Why? Once he knew where you were working, he could threaten to expose you. What? And you, Miss Carstairs, were afraid that the blackmailer would tell your brother, Arthur. Well, I regret to tell you that Arthur already knew. Oh, how horrible! Yes. That's what happens when a man devotes his life to greed and the love of money. You see, it wasn't ancient Roman coins that Arthur cared about, but quite ordinary modern ones. He gradually sold all that he'd inherited. And then he tried to increase his fortune by blackmailing his own family. So this... This is now the remarkable Carstairs collection. You mean it, it's all gone? Yes, I'm afraid the great coin collector was nothing more than a sordid miser. But when all said and done, is there really so much difference? Why should the collector be admired, and the miser not? The same rule applies. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. Oh, no. That's strange. There is something left after all. A small bronze coin with the head of Caesar. I think this rightly belongs to you, Miss Carstairs. I feel sure there's somebody you want to give it to. Longer. I'm just a woman, and I think that clocks should tell the time. You've got to live in the real world, Arthur. You can't shut yourself away like this. And what good are these coins, hidden away in a safe? They're dead, absolutely dead. Where are you going? If you're so keen to wind up your clock, I shall find your key. It doesn't matter, Arthur. It's not what I...
Chelsea 356. Hello, is Mr. Hawker there, please? Philip? Can you meet me straight away? In the gardens, by the memorial. I want to give you something. Please, look, it's terribly important. In about 20 minutes. I thought you were going out. It's just as well I didn't. Arthur telephoned. Arthur? For me? No, for me. He seemed quite friendly. Wanted to know what jobs I was applying for and whether he could help. Extraordinary. We'll, we'll talk about it later, Giles. I have to go out now. Yes, you do seem in a hurry. sunlight I felt everyone was watching me. I was a criminal. No. Yes, he came to see me this morning. I didn't wish to see him. Why not? He caused a great deal of pain to our father in his lifetime. He didn't even take the trouble to attend the funeral. He couldn't. He was in Australia. Anyway, that's past history. Arthur, I do wish you'd be nice to him. Does he intend to work for his living? Of course. He's applying for a job tomorrow in a bank. Oh, in a bank. I see. Where does he intend to live? At the moment, in my flat. <laughs> I've given him the spare bedroom until he can find somewhere of his own. How very generous of you, Christabel. I've always been very fond of Giles. Yes, yes, you have the usual female tendency to prefer the weak. I take it that he's penniless. Yes, I'm afraid Australia didn't turn out too well. But I'm quite sure that you'll take care of him, Christabel. I'll have to if you won't. Well, you are the rich one of the family. Arthur, this is ridiculous. This house and all the stocks and shares Father left me aren't worth nearly as much as this collection. You're not suggesting that I sell this in order to support your brother? Your brother too? And anyway, there must be duplicates or, or ones you don't want. I mean, there are simply hundreds. You stupid, ignorant girl, Christabel. This collection is uniquely perfect. Our great-grandfather began it and our father devoted his whole life to it, as I shall mine. It contains a single immaculate example of every coin struck by the Imperial Roman Mint. Gold, silver, bronze. There isn't a museum that has such a treasure. It's a sacred trust that's been handed down to us. Or rather to me, as I seem to be the only cast heirs with a proper sense of responsibility. Well, I'm just a woman, and I think that clocks should tell the time. You've got to live in the real world, Arthur. You can't shut yourself away like this. And what good are these coins, hidden away in a safe? They're dead, absolutely dead. Where are you going? If you're so keen to wind up your clock, I shall find your key. It doesn't matter, Arthur. It's not what I... It doesn't matter, Arthur. 
Really, I must go now. Chelsea 356. Hello, is Mr. Hawker there, please? Philip? Can you meet me straight away? In the gardens, by the memorial. I want to give you something. Please, look, it's terribly important. In about 20 minutes. <laughs> I thought you were going out. It's just as well I didn't. Arthur telephoned. Arthur? For me? No, for me. <laughs> he seemed quite friendly. Wanted to know what jobs I was applying for and whether he could help. Extraordinary. We'll, we'll talk about it later, Giles. I have to go out now. Yes, you do seem in a hurry. Even when I went out into the sunlight, I felt everyone was watching me. I was a criminal, a thief. But when I saw Philip, I knew that I didn't care. Philip, darling. Oh, dearest Philip. What's the matter? Oh, Philip, I do love you. Look, I shouldn't be here at all. I'm supposed to meet this man. But you sound in such a state. Self. Mm. What news of Brother Giles? Oh, he's working in a bank. Perfectly respectable as far as one can see. But curious when you realize that he has been in prison for fraud. No, I can explain that. Miss Carstairs told me that Brother Arthur gave him a reference. <laughs> Only goes to show that people aren't always as unpleasant as one thinks. Well, is there a possibility that he will forgive her as well? Oh, good heavens, no. <laughs> stealing from one's employer is one thing, but stealing from the Carstairs collection, that'd be sacrilege. He'd probably hand her over to the police. It is a bit worrying, though, that Philip should be in such a hurry to sell that coin. It puts the obvious solution entirely out of reach. What obvious solution? Well, if he hadn't done that, we could have popped it back in Arthur's safe. At least I couldn't, but you could have done. You know. <laughs> yes, well, perhaps I had better see this uh, Mr. Trussler. Uh, after all, he has a great reputation. He won't want to hang on to stolen property. Yes, that's a good idea, Flambeau. Mm. Appeal to his sense of honor or his fear of ending up in court. But I have something else to do. No, oh, what's that? I'm going to give a fancy dress party. Hello, Ex Hello Exchange. I want Chelsea 356. Miss Oliphant's Academy? Yes. Message from Miss Carstairs? Oh, what a delightful thought. How perfectly sweet of Christabel. One moment, I'll take down the address. 18 Brampton Gate. Yes, thank you so much. Goodbye. He probably won't come at all. Oh, I'm quite sure he will. But when he finds the house full of people... Oh, I don't know. Miss Christabel, a fancy dress party is the one place where a man with a false nose should feel at home. Yeah. That'll be our guest. Philip, now go and tell them where to hang their coats. Now, Miss Christabel, when the blackmailer calls for his money, I want you to offer him something else. Now, Monsieur Flambeau will tell you in a moment. Just... Oh, 
Hello, Christabel. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so very much. What's it doing? Three, four, seven, eight. Combination to your brother's safe. Need it later. I see. I should be absolutely tickling. <laughs> Any soda? Oh, you want service? Oh, could I have a little soda also? I'd like some. Oh, here, oh, it makes a little strong. Oh, please. Will somebody take me home? <laughs> Yes, of course. I suppose he was blackmailing you as well. One always becomes suspicious when people start acting out of character. You thought it strange, Giles, that my friend Flambeau was pretending to be a butler, so you followed him into this room. But the time you should have got suspicious was when you were handed that unexpected reference. From Arthur? Oh, yes. Why? Once he knew where you were working, he could threaten to expose you. What? And you, Miss Carstairs, were afraid that the blackmailer would tell your brother, Arthur. Well, I regret to tell you that Arthur already knew. Oh, how horrible! Yes. That's what happens when a man devotes his life to greed and the love of money. You see, it wasn't ancient Roman coins that Arthur cared about, but quite ordinary modern ones. He gradually sold all that he'd inherited. And then he tried to increase his fortune by blackmailing his own family. So this... This is now the remarkable Carstairs collection. You mean it's all gone? Yes, I'm afraid the great coin collector was nothing more than a sordid miser. But when all said and done, is there really so much difference? Why should the collector be admired and the miser not? The same rule applies. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. Oh, no. That's strange. There is something left after all. A small bronze coin with the head of Caesar. I think this rightly belongs to you, Miss Carstairs. I feel sure there's somebody you want to give it to. Rondo. Constable, we'll wait for the inspection. Every coin struck by the Imperial Roman Mint. Gold, silver, bronze. There isn't a museum that has such a treasure. It's a sacred trust that's been handed down to us. Or rather to me, as I seem to be the only Carstairs with a proper sense of responsibility. Well, I'm just a woman, and I think that clocks should tell the time. You've got to live in the real world, Arthur. You can't shut yourself away like this. And what good are these coins, hidden away in a safe? They're dead, absolutely dead. Where are you going? If you're so keen to wind up your clock, I shall find your key. It doesn't matter, Arthur. It's not what I...
Chelsea 356. Hello, is Mr. Hawker there, please? Philip? Can you meet me straight away? In the gardens, by the memorial. I want to give you something. Look, please, look, it's terribly important. In about 20 minutes. <laughs> I thought you were going out. It's just as well I didn't. Arthur telephoned. Arthur? For me? No, for me. He seemed quite friendly. Wanted to know what jobs I was applying for and whether he could help. Extraordinary. We'll, we'll talk about it later, Giles. I have to go out now. Yes, you do seem in a hurry. We'll, we'll talk about it later, Giles. I have to go out now. Yes, you do seem in a hurry. sunlight I felt everyone was watching me. I was a criminal, a thief. But when I saw Philip, I knew that I didn't care. I do love you. Look, I shouldn't be here at all. I'm supposed to meet this man. But you sound in such a state. What is it? Well, I want to give you something. It's, well, it's it's sort of pledge between us. It's very nice, Christopher. What is it? Don't you see? It's like you, a portrait. Yes. Yes, I suppose it is a bit. Thank you very much. <laughs> now let's do something wild and crazy. Look, I'm supposed to meet this man. I'm late already. Oh, let's take a boat out on the surface. I really can't. I must go now. Excuse me, miss. Have you got the time? It's a most curious story, Miss Carstairs, and I would like to help you if I can. That man. You saw him? Yes. Yes, of course. I suppose he was blackmailing you as well. One always becomes suspicious when people start acting out of character. You thought it strange, Giles, that my friend Flambeau was pretending to be a butler, so you followed him into this room. But the time you should have got suspicious was when you were handed that unexpected reference. From Arthur? Oh, yes. Why? Once he knew where you were working, he could threaten to expose you. What? And you, Miss Carstairs, 
were afraid that the blackmailer would tell your brother, Arthur. Well, I regret to tell you that Arthur already knew. Oh, how horrible! Yes. That's what happens when a man devotes his life to greed and the love of money. You see, it wasn't ancient Roman coins that Arthur cared about, but quite ordinary modern ones. He gradually sold all that he'd inherited, and then he tried to increase his fortune by blackmailing his own family. So this... This is now the remarkable Carstairs collection. You mean it's all gone? Yes, I'm afraid the great coin collector was nothing more than a sordid miser. But when all said and done, is there really so much difference? Why should the collector be admired and the miser not? The same rule applies. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. Oh, no. That's strange. There is something left after all. A small bronze coin with the head of Caesar. Hmm. Well, I think this rightly belongs to you, Miss Carstairs. I feel sure there's somebody you want to give it to. Long down. I see. Go on. What did he say? He said, if I didn't give him a, a lot of money and my jewels, he'd tell Arthur I was a thief. Oh. Well, he wouldn't let me go until I promised. I said I'd meet him there again tomorrow night. What time? Ten o'clock. I'm going with her. Yes, well, that might be an excellent idea. Well, I must be off. Thank you, Miss Christabel. Uh, but I don't think you should be obtrusive. Uh, what disguise do you intend to wear? Fancy dress ball. I'd forgotten all about that. I hadn't. <laughs> was it wise to let him know so much? Well, she'd have been bound to tell him anyway. And if we give him enough rope, we'll see if he hangs himself. Mm. What news of Brother Giles? Oh, he's working in a bank. Perfectly respectable, as far as one can see. But curious when you realize that he has been in prison for fraud. No, I can explain that. Miss Carstairs told me that Brother Arthur gave him a reference. <laughs> Only goes to show that people aren't always as unpleasant as one thinks. But well, is there a possibility that he will forgive her as well? Oh, good heavens, no. <laughs> stealing from one's employer is one thing, but stealing from the Carstairs collection, that'd be sacrilege. He'd probably hand her over to the police. It is a bit worrying, though, that Philip should be in such a hurry to sell that coin. It puts the obvious solution entirely out of reach. What obvious solution? Well, if he hadn't done that, we could have popped it back in Arthur's safe. At least I couldn't, but you could have done. You know. <laughs> yes, well, perhaps I had better see this uh, Mr. Truslove. Uh, after all, he has a great reputation. He won't want to hang on to stolen property. Yes, that's a good idea, Flambeau. Mm. Appeal to his sense of honor or his fear of ending up in court. Oh. I have something else to do. Oh, what's that? I'm going to give a fancy dress party. Hello, ex Hello, Exchange. I want Chelsea 356. Miss Oliphant's Academy? Yes. Message from Miss Carstairs? Oh, what a delightful thought. How perfectly sweet of Christabel. One moment, I'll take down the address. Eighteen, Brampton Gate. Yes, thank you so much. Goodbye. 
He probably won't come at all. Oh, I'm quite sure he will. But when he finds the house full of people... Oh, I don't know. And Miss Christabel, a fancy dress party is the one place where a man with a false nose should feel at home. Here we are. That'll be our guests. Philip, I go and tell them court. I have something else to do. Oh, what's that? I'm going to give a fancy dress party. Hello, ex Hello, exchange. I want Chelsea three five six. Miss Oliphant's Academy. Yes. Message from Miss Carstairs. Oh, what a delightful thought. How perfectly sweet of Christabel. One moment, I'll take down the address. Eighteen, Brampton Gate. Yes, thank you so much. Goodbye. He probably won't come at all. Oh, I'm quite sure he will. But when he finds the house full of people... Oh, I don't know. And Miss Christabel, a fancy dress party is the one place where a man with a false nose should feel at home. Here we are. That'll be our guests. Philip, I go and tell them where to hang their coats. Now, Miss Christabel, when the blackmailer calls for his money, I want you to offer him something else. Now, Monsieur Flambeau will tell you in a moment. Just... Just... Hello, Christabel. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very 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 Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Good evening, Giles. Evening, Giles. Oh, uh, hello, Christabel. Uh, look, excuse me a minute, will you? Giles? Yes, Won't be long now. It's almost ten o'clock. I can't find Philip. He went into the hall. What the devil's going on? The men said you'd go in. I take it these are your friends. Yes. Well, I'm quite sure you'll excuse me if I, I don't join What a join lovely you. party. I can't think why we have to go for the other door. Did you know? No, it's so much fun here, isn't it? All the is down. Oh, is it? <laughs> I can't find Philip. He'll be out there in the hall. Lovely. I must say, your get ups is marvelous. Oh, I, I, I don't think yours is, is too bad. I really oh, must thank say. You. It's a clear you, know, you and I ought to go to the dance together. Sacred and profane. Yes, I suppose. We might win a prize. <laughs> Christopher, what a simply enormous house. Wouldn't it be fun if we all played sardine? Yes, or murder? Oh, I say, you are. Yes, miss. Plombo, do something for me. Of course. Follow that man with the false nose. How do you know it's false? Well, it's not the sort of nose one would wear out of vanity, is it? So he's probably put it on because his own one is so much better. Do you know who he is? No, do you? Come to that, who are you? I, I don't think you can help me. Yeah. But uh, you do need help, don't you? You came in here because it was the only place of refuge that you could find. You're an art student, aren't you? Mm -hmm. That folder. 
met a rather pretty hat. My name is Christabel Carstairs. Christabel Carstairs. Well, that's a good, sensible, down-to-earth sort of name. I'm sure you don't believe in hobgoblins, especially when they wear false noses, which are always inclined to get a bit droopy in this kind of weather. Are you going to tell me who it is? I don't know. He's been trying to blackmail me. Because you've done something wrong? Yes. Well, perhaps you'd better tell me all about it. I don't suppose it's as bad as you think. What makes it so terrible is that I've broken faith. Not just with my brother, but with my father, too. Perhaps you've heard of him. Colonel Carstairs. Colonel Carstairs? Oh, yes, of course. He, he built up that remarkable collection of uh, Roman coins. Oh, yes, everybody. Oh, I seem to remember reading an obituary notice uh, some two months ago in the Morning Post. Yes, that was him. A wonderful man, but a very stern and unbending one as well. He'd never have understood why I did this frightful thing. He'd have thought I was insane. He dedicated his whole life to that collection. He had a full set of...